Hi, it's Jason Statham on a comedy advice podcast. What's your name? What you doing? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy, 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 Jason. It's Stefan, your actual host here. Jason, he gets a little ambitious and he starts trying to be menacing, but that's not going to fly here. What's going to fly here is jovial cheer. And man, I found a rhyme again in the intro. Guys, I'm so happy to have you on board on the flight of this episode of a comedy advice podcast. And guess what? Special guest Rick Overton. He's an actor, writer, and comedian. And he did a very special thing. He just had his new special come out called Set List. And he did not write anything for it. Actually, if you guys haven't heard about Set List, it's a really cool concept where comedians go on and there's a, a uh, screen that gives them prompts and they have to talk about that for five minutes or so. And he did an actual special where he just pulled things out of the tush based off of the screen. And it was hilarious. I highly recommend that you watch it. Link is going to be in the show notes right after you listen to the episode though. Cause I think the episode is like a nice charcuterie board and he's like a nice prosciutto and I'm like an olive cause I'm kind of green and boring and I think a little swollen, a little puffy, but I go down. Okay. I'm good with a martini or after you've had a martini. I don't know, but Rick, he's that good type of prosciutto. He's a slice of goodness. And I, I can't get enough of him. You guys can't either. Apparently Hollywood can't either. Cause he's been in everything. He was in the office. He was Pam's dad. He was in groundhog day. He was in a whole bunch of movies. His IMDB page is just riddled with spots because he's just that good he's an amazing human being and he's just such a treasure to talk to he's so fun so show him some support watch his special also september 8th phoenicians at the house of comedy i am going to be performing with lamar mitchell jr at our new show trash or treasure where we have comedians in a tournament style debate where they talk about if a topic is trash or treasure and the audience decides who wins? And it's beautiful. It's going to be amazing. And it's September 8th. Link is in the show notes for that as well. Come on down, watch and say hello, you know, and if you haven't yet subscribe, leave a review, tell a friend about this lovely podcast or listen with a friend to have a listening party. Find the friend that just talks so much and you want them to stop. Be like, Hey, do you want to listen to this podcast? And then you can listen to me, your new friend that talks so much. So I'm going to stop talking in my present self. And then I'll let you hear me in my past self. Here's the episode. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but <laughs> wording is in progress. I love, I love the word progress. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I like the word in. That's that's a key one <laughs> that for me. <laughs> ah, youth, sweet youth, sweet youth. <laughs> Rick, how are you doing, by the way? I'm doing great, thanks. <laughs> How's it oh. going? Thanks for having me on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for coming on. I'm really excited to chat with you. So that's uh, uh, this is gonna be gonna be great. I love the background too. Yours is so much more interesting than me. Leaving a little bit of mystery, I'm getting like the the bottom half of a lake. That green screen comes down. Oh, nice, nice. It's like my little you know COVID lockdown studio in here, and uh, I just you know put the crap down, and then suddenly I'm somewhere else. So, oh, it looks looks great. Looks oh, awesome. Look, it's this is the best it's looked in a while. Oh, hey, nice. Th- this is a green screen background. That's how good it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going for that. Oh, he's got some artsy pro- mid project thing going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. I like that. The work oh, in good. progress. Uh, that, yes. That's the word we love. Oh, man. And the, the shirt, too. I think it just really complements the whole thing. I love the, the yellow. Is it too busy? Do I, need to, uh, do, you, do I need to have my shirt tone it down so we can hear each other? <laughs> it is speaking louder than you right now so if, if yeah if i'll just, try to talk over the shirt. i'll be very rude i'm gonna talk over the shirt <laughs> oh man and guess what you listeners and watchers you might be like who's talking over the shirt it's a very special guest here on a comedy advice podcast with me Stefan satani joining us today comedian actor writer improviser rick overton everybody clap 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 Oh, uh, we'll fit in post. Hey, thank you very much for having me on the show. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, 
yeah, this is great. And um, by the way, this is the this is the face of the future. Learn how to be on this TV because you can be on this one a lot. Oh man, yes, the, the zoom. TV, the TV you got in your pocket. The, the I like that the pocket picture, the pocket the pocket TV. That's really it's, nice. it is. You remember it used to be giant news networks. Now it's just some guy goes uh, and starts recording. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Whether you know it or Any not, person, too. Anybody, anybody can do it. Oh man, even yes, exactly. Even a caveman can do it. And uh, you know, I am I'm really excited to have you here, Rick, because I also just watched your new special, the uh, set list live, which was. I was dazzled, I have to say. It was an absolutely incredible special, and I wanted to talk with you about it a little bit. Uh, uh, first thing I wanted to, well, also for the listeners who are intrigued, and listeners, the links are going to be in the show notes, so you guys can click on over there after this conversation and watch that special. But it was, one of the coolest things about it was it was 100% improvised, which was really cool. That's it. Just... Uh, uh... The set list is such a fun and wonderful game. Don't you think it is? Have, have you seen set list before? That was the first time I've seen set list. Wow. Oh, okay, good. That's, <laughs> a, that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a, a nice one for dipping my toes in the water. But yeah. for everybody that that is new to set list, correct me if I'm wrong here, Rick, but set list apparently it's a game that's been created for stand up comedians co to kind of test out. If they had just walked on stage and prepared nothing, they get these cues from the mm -hmm. screen. Things like on, on your set list, there was what Cirque de Circumcision and uh, <laughs> uh what am I gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> And, and like free range concentration camp, all sorts of crazy wacky cues where I feel right, feel every field. It's all, it's like going into a batting cage where the balls are being auto launched from every direction at once. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you and, do you're like a Jedi, just knocking them away in every direction. They, some are going to hit you right in the face. <laughs> <You're not gonna laughs> get, I missed that one. Uh, <laughs> oh man and and it's and you so get to see it all. you get to see me get my ass beat i go i claw out again you know the whole thing up oh. and down left and right and and it was super cool to see and i have to say too this is the first you're the first person to actually make a full special out of it because usually the sets are a lot shorter but you ended up doing a full was it 40 30 minutes yeah and then you put the little things on the front of the end because we needed to explain what this is a little bit because it's kind of weird and different mm -hmm. and hopefully hopefully there'll be more of these there'll be more set list specials with uh, other artists doing this and hopefully i get to do another one here's the thing about it you don't need a year of workout to get your next hour you just need to ride to the theater uh, I <laughs> you need to be there that night and if the uh, the one running it has a whole other list of suggestions to go off of, you just go right back up and do it again. It's not the same show. You're doing a completely different thing with the same use of your right hemisphere again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know it was really cool because after the the special there you you can watch this on the on the special afterwards there's the post commentary where you're talking about your thought process going through it and you said some really impactful things to me i think uh, i i actually wrote a couple of them down uh, one of the things was you like to dig yourself in a hole you like to go as far as you can in the trenches to just see how you can claw your way out of it which i thought was really an interesting perspective where a lot of people including myself like to avoid falling in the trenches digging ourselves in holes but you and you your perspective is i welcome that i like to test myself and see how i can get out of it which obviously it happened a couple times in the show and it was such a high reward for both you and the audience to be able to see you get out of it and find a funny place to it but um, first off, that's such a cool perspective that I have started to try and um, use. That's really part of the point of why I'm doing all this. That makes me very happy. All right. Good. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. And 
I, I just, uh, sometimes I feel, right. especially if I go and do stand up or if I'm even doing an interview like this, I'm like, oh no, what's going to happen if I go in a, a left field or go in a different place? So they say this, I'm like, you know what? I'll see, I'll challenge myself, see where I can be. And it leads into another thing that you were saying too, on um, if your brain is dial up, your, your gut is DSL, which mm -hmm. made me think a lot too, where I think a lot of us don't understand the, the power of our gut, which some with severe indigestion might, but I think more metaphorically speaking, it's, it's really an impactful tool where it can process things so quickly. And some things you're able to just, I mean, you are able to paint pictures where you, you set the scene of yourself in a hospital gown and um, at a retirement home and all these things just on the fly. And I feel from what you said and what I believe it was your gut that, that helped you out there. It's just smarter than you. It's faster than you. It's writer. It's just, it's right more often than you. If oh. you is the rest of you listening or not listening to it, but every time you listen to it, you win. It, it never out on your side. The other half of your brain is like a recording device. And it doesn't know any better that when it's recording everything live time, it doesn't know it's not making it. It has a, why am I storing it if I'm not making it? It's because you're the other, you're the storage unit. <laughs> Just like my phone didn't come up with all my friends on that list, but the phone thinks it owns everything now. Yeah, very and true. The, the half of your brain, which is the left brain. And people think left brain is creative. No, right brain is creative. It goes to the left side because everything switches. But uh your and your gut and your left brain could be the same thing depending on how you look at this. You could say that there's no real receptor down here below your sternum that's receiving any information. And maybe, I don't know, maybe it all is in your mind. Maybe it is all out of your memory. Hmm. But I think there's something more to it. Whenever you're coming up with bits or things like you've never even thought of the topic and you're just coming up with this great bit out of nowhere. Like, what the hell's going on there? I just have to respect that improv on some level as a mechanism tapped into the, the Jungian larger subconscious of some kind, you know? Maybe that's mm -hmm. uh, a technology that we just don't call technology yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But one day we'll look at it as a science when we have a better understanding. Science is just the getting off your ass and trying to understand it. Mm -hmm. That's what the science is. Figure it out. <laughs> it's really, really interesting. All of that too, because I had, um, I'd had Colin Mockery and Brad Sherwood from Who's Line on here. And they were talking about it where people were still saying, oh, but it's not all made up, right? You guys do script, have some scripted parts or you do um, practice. And they're like, no, we, I mean, we, they might practice through improv, but none of it's written just like your set too and it's really cool well it's really strange that people just still aren't able to wrap their minds around it and i'm not sure how much science has been done around it but i think that it's something that people just don't know that much about and it might it I they're think scared through... to death of it they're scared and and the reason so much of it uh, that fear that you know dominant I don't want to risk looking bad or looking stupid or being a fool. Uh, and I don't want to risk silence when I want to laugh. All these things, they're out of the memory half of the brain because it's screaming through the Rolodex. Going, I can't get you jokes at this speed right now. I'm going to abandon you. I can't find them in time. You're screwed with me. And, and the problem is, it is only speaking from its perspective. You are screwed if that is the Rolodex you're using. It is actually correct. It's not accounting for the partner that's doing all the work, bringing in all the intuitive stuff and opening and, and trusting and being brave. And, uh, you know, because there's a part of me is kind of like a daredevil on some levels, but there's an old man. How's an old man going to be a daredevil? You know, what am I, what can I do risky now? Hoo -hoo. Get that old ring. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, I, I try to set up things where I'm going to dig myself into such a certain ditch. You know, America, we need certain such and such that uh, 
And I and I know from my childhood the one thing my father told me. And turn around, and it can't be anything that the father said to you, and you have to somehow justify it, you know. Yeah. And so yeah. my ditch, I try to get out of is oh. it's so certain. So if you're going to try and have some fun with this game set list, maybe at first just stay loose. But when you think you're a little more confident and fluid with it, try setting yourself up so now you got to because these are all tests for your your ability and your mind included and your your skill and your your belief in yourself it's a separate thing when you believe in yourself this what are you calling that self is it just all the experiences from the past or is yourself also this person who booms out these interesting new things too because you got out of your own way so why don't why don't you call that yourself as well just add that to the list of what yourself is. You don't have to take anything away. Just also think of yourself as a fluid, forward, chancing artist. You know, everything new had to be made from that same place, whether you're holding a paintbrush or a, a chisel, pen. I think I'm just going to edit this part out and play it back to myself every morning with music. That's the oh, most good. motivation. <laughs> good 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 uh, that's, but no, I, no road memorization now come on <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true <laughs> but i wanted to ask i mean it seems like you have reached that place where you are able to do that and has it always been that way or was there a certain point when you made a conscious decision to say you know what i'm going to believe in myself i'm going to trust my gut and i'm gonna kind of do improv or have you always been that way I would say it's a gradient scale of stumbles along the way and getting dusting off and getting up again and trying it again because you had a hero early on. And my hero early on was Jonathan Winters as a kid when he's doing the stick on the par show and they just gave him a stick. And this is like talk shows were black and white and kinescope and new and live commercials and everything mm -hmm. was kind of spontaneous. And Jonathan, they trusted him that they didn't clear a list of material you show the producer before you go on. Spot producer always has to go like with a, you know, a microscope for every syllable and what you're saying out there. You don't want to anger the sponsors, but they didn't care with Jonathan. Nothing. Just go. When do you think he'll be done roughly? And he would just go and just improvise and kill. And they're very smart to allow that to happen because they gave themselves a gift by allowing that to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that works out fine for them. Yeah, it just reminded me, actually, I, I thought about this is I had, had um, Eric Griffin on a while back and I had seen that he had done, I haven't, I didn't see I'm dying up here, but I, I started to watch a couple of clips and I saw it, you in it as well. Thank you. He's a wonderful actor did you see that scene where those guys have a fight and you're like a hack comic and he smashes his bar up and all that yeah yeah and is he, he's looking at his life the way he thinks he's sold out and everything you know that was like <laughs> oh it's so freaking good look comedians can do this you know comedians uh -huh. can act their asses off judy gold is an actor right? it was yeah, made me cry I mean, you, you yourself as well. And, and I had first, this was a couple of years ago when I had heard this interview with Vince Gilligan, who wrote Breaking Bad, and he was talking about how comedians make some of the best actors. And he had had, I think it was Bill Burr and Leonard mm -hmm. Outs, and, and he was talking about how good they were. And then I started having that consciously i started to see all these comedians i mean you as well um and uh, i think i first i saw you in the office after i was um um thinking about that interview i think you were pam's dad and mm -hmm. uh i mean i mean you've been in so many different things too i mean i've seen you in the league and i've used and improv in in more than half of my imdb i've been allowed to improvise because I got a reputation that that'll be okay to let them do it. You know, they know that you'll turn out something that they can use and you're not going to step on everybody and you're not going to not be in character to get your laugh. And uh, cause you know, on camera improv is like a, in some ways it's a lot different from the way you do improv on stage or even mm -hmm. in set list mm -hmm. because you are on on stage, you're showing off how clever and fast you are. 
but improv on cameras you're straight poker straight playing an idiot six pages ahead of how stupid he is or whatever it is that's like that to get that improv christopher guest kind of you don't it's not how funny and and, and cool you are it's how funny and cool you think you are you uh -huh, just, you know, uh -huh. and you're adhering to it and it's all the little life details added in between those things that make up that's on camera improv has a lot of that and then there's funny on cam camera improv where you're you're just someone else doing a thing that helps the scene. And even in Beverly Hills Cop, we were playing around with the scenes throughout. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got introduced to improvising in films a lot. It was difficult almost to, you know, and then I go, okay, stick to the page. I got in trouble a couple of times. But it's because oh, I really bit, Yeah, a little bit. Let's okay, okay, okay. You know, they're trying to be like, okay, let's let's, let's just let's just do the scene. <laughs> 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 but I, but I, got, I got this great gag. Let's let's just do the scene. <laughs> I, yep i've been there before foreplay with the wife she's like let's just stick to the routine please like, okay okay uh, yeah. right uh, hang uh, on lost my place hang on all right so this is our, <laughs> are we on goldenrod uh pages now is this goldenrod <laughs> are, are, are we, are we pages <laughs> oh you oh my gosh you are uh, Rick, you uh, out of everything I've seen you in, and including the improv, it's just I I want to be like you when I am bigger. I guess I'm getting now. Just just uh, start <laughs> looking in the mirror, going, "Oh man, <laughs> happened there." It's uh, um, yeah. Stat. What happened there? Is my <laughs> yes, that's I I think I'm screwed because my dad's bald, my mom's bald, my whole dad is what bald. You're yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah yeah all right that's so. that goes it jumps from mom's dad to you but how that's old are right. you now? 33 well maybe they'll have some miracle something or other for you you know some electrical hat every morning <laughs> just, just oh. drilling lasers into my follicles until i uh <laughs> <laughs> all right it's all for a good cause it's all for vanity <laughs> it, it it singes my eyebrows off but the the head hair that's what they found out later it wipes out the eyebrows yeah so. <laughs> I, um, i'm i'm completely sterile but uh, you know the, the head of hair commercial for the lawyer have your eyebrows been destroyed <laughs> by herotron hats and you know <laughs> follotron <laughs> follotron <laughs> Oh my God. I love it. I love it. So Rick, th this has been awesome. We're going to dive into the advice portion of the podcast and we're going to answer some questions from. Oh, this wasn't it. I thought I was getting great advice. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, no. You gave some great actual advice. Now we can do some I'm just lighthearted. Thinking of, hang on. Meme shot. Beautiful. And is that some yerba mate that I see you drinking? That's right. Very nice. I, my, my wife is from Brazil and she has, she drinks yerba mate as well. So yeah, I like it. I like it. It's a more balanced kind of energy. Yes. Yes, exactly. She has it in this little, in this little, uh, goblet type thing. So I look like with the hair, I kind of look like a wizard when I drink it. It's got the little stem, but it's very majestic. I hate you, the taste, I, but uh, you know, that kidney stone, you shall not pass. <laughs> This first right. question we've got here, it's from the Reddit advice column. And it says, getting two wisdom teeth out and I'm terrified of the laughing gas. I'll be there with my mother and there are things I absolutely cannot tell her. If I'm on the wonky gas, am I gonna be able to keep my mouth shut and not tell her the things? Will I be able to control what I say at all? Or am I kind of fucked? Wow. <laughs> um, the, I, I say, don't be there. Tell mom not to be there. If you're that scared, man, you know, you're sitting on something. For, for that to even be like a question, you see, yeah, come on, you're sitting on something. That's, it wouldn't occur to me to ask that or that. That means you get mom. Or you know what? Steer into the skid and tell mom now. That's what I say. Just lay it out. Tell her now before you're under. Find a way to word it. Tell her now. 
Oh, that I love that advice. Cause that way you can at least be a little tactful about it. If there's a body in the closet, you could be like, mom, you remember Bill? He was mean. <laughs> yeah. Remember that smell, now- smell in the closet? Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? If she's great at cleaning, she can help you dispose of the body. It can be like a, a bonding activity. Where did I go wrong? <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's the, the truck, Henry. I <laughs> left one more than my knees. <laughs> it's that darn fallatron. That was the fall of our son's morals, I believe. But uh, zapped uh, his yeah. soul. That thing zapped his soul. He wasn't the same after that. He's got fabulous hair, but n- unscrupulous morals. <laughs> He can't stop facing north. <laughs> it, his moral compass and his actual compass are broken now. So it's. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And, uh, They're pointing at each other. And you know that I don't believe in pointing. <laughs> I would the I think that's great advice. The only other thing I was thinking of is share the laughing gas with mom. Maybe she'll get does she have her wisdom teeth out? Have the same thing happen to her. Mom, those wisdom teeth, they're just really, really causing some trouble over there. So I think you need to get them plucked out and I'll drive you home. Did did I dream that you said that you were having sex with the horse or <laughs> was that oh mom yeah you dreamt that that was definitely something you dreamt yeah that is never anything i would say about our horse uh, yes old that old never now and runs to the other side of the stable when i come in <laughs> that that was that was me that wrote help in the bottom floor of the stable with a hoof <laughs> that was not our horse no no <laughs> <laughs> Flicka is smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, some excellent advice on that question. We'll move on. Yeah, you brought it home, doctor. That was a fantastic. I, I concur, doctor. Um, well, the, uh, the last question we've got here is, I keep having nightmares and not sure how to stop them or why they're happening. I've been having nightmares on and off for the last four or five years, and I don't know what's causing them or what to do. Most of the time I'm running from or trying to hide from something, but I never see what I'm hiding or running from. I just know it's bad and scary, or I'm trying to save someone. I moved recently and I saged the house and myself before moving in, hoping it would help somehow after a suggestion from a friend, Uh, but I'm not getting any help with the nightmares, any ideas. Oof. So, Rick, do you do you have nightmares usually, or are you a, a sound sleeper with good dreams? Oh no, all my nightmares are when my eyes are completely open. <laughs> 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 no, no, you don't need them. Just uh, turn on the news there and have yourself a look. Drive, <laughs> drive through any major city, and uh, you will see that you I, don't take that crap into your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> You have thoroughly processed it by the time you're home. No, I would say that, <laughs> yeah, I'd say, you know, that it's, you can pretend to deal with it by taking some kind of antidepressant or whatever it is that makes you sleep. But there's some of these sleep remedies. You wake up naked driving to Vegas because you're going to gamble or something like that, like Ambien, you know? And so I, I don't know if the pill route is the smart way to go here, but maybe a little dash of self-examination trying to figure out where that dream is coming from. I, okay. I like that a lot. And I also liked the perspective, which I find solace in is the world is plenty terrifying while you're awake. So it can't be that bad while you're asleep. I, I, I also, maybe I don't know what you're doing before you go to bed are you watching scary movies um i because you could watch comedy instead you could watch rick overton's set list special which is incredible i (laughs) can find it on prime you can rent it on uh, youtube and you can get it on comedydynamics.com there we go and the link is is in the show notes too so you can click right over there for some 
the sweetest of dreams i i heard guaranteed <laughs> um yeah I, I hear that there's something called rescue remedy uh sleep formula i think oh. anytime oh it's going to be about a formula of some sort they don't last forever your body adjusts to any kind of material you take to sleep i don't care what it is what the doctor says oh we got to up the dose we got to this we got to that but i think you got to look at what that thing is generally it's like a part of your subconscious that gets mm -hmm. no recognition during the day and finally finds a window at night to try and excuse me i don't mean to interrupt your dream but i'm from your childhood and there's some crap you gotta look at man because it's steering you wacky in your day-to-day -day life right now oh i like that so it's it's kind of like trusting your gut like when you're up on stage trust your gut when you're sleeping and it's telling you that there's some childhood trauma that needs to be dealt with or maybe there is somebody scary by the window that is coming for you so be alert yeah. the scary person by the windows of sense of helplessness and vulnerability and generally that would be kid can't really fight back you know so uh, that's why we go to childhood often for these things it isn't always from childhood it could be a recent trauma and god knows Fair. we've had a those right you know Fair. so I mean, I, I I don't always have a joke for things like this because there might be something a little heavier going on here that I don't know where the joke goes, you know. Yeah, that, that's that's totally fair. La I think I mean maybe the last thing, uh, go get your wisdom teeth taken out. Maybe you could get the laughing gas, and then you could record yourself so you could understand your subconscious a little bit. You could tell yourself those dark secrets that not even you don't want mom to to hear. And you know, there's a theme going on here, right? Everything's connecting to one place. And mm -hmm. that's the place unaddressed. The place is the subconscious. Whereas with improv, it is the place addressed. It is in fact in the place invited to not only participate, but lead. Uh, the subconscious gets permission to be the boss briefly. And it does quite well. I it's like very that. So, so maybe do improv too. That might be a, a great place. That might be some good therapy. And improv therapy, therapy has been known to work in the past. There's people who have processed a lot of stuff out in a scene. I know, you know that we do, we're the only the guys with a job where we get paid to work our therapy out on them in the <laughs> audience. You know, it's, it's, they pay us. That's, that's a good point. I like that. That's a nice twist. <laughs> You know, we kind of, and in one way or another, we're kind of working something out and we often get it worked out. It's really good for you. It's good for you to express. Yes, Ag agreed, agreed. I think that was some fantastic advice for this, this uh, nightmare riddled human being. So I hope you have some sweet dreams and I hope all of you guys have some sweet dreams after you listen to this episode because it was so much fun. Rick, thank you so much for joining. Hey, I had the best time. Thanks for inviting me and uh, I hope we get to chat again and thanks for helping promote my comedy special. Oh, absolutely. And I know we talked about your comedy special, which is going to be in the show notes for everybody that missed it the other two times. But Rick, is there anything else that you'd like to plug? Um, where can people find you, follow you? Uh, Rick else? Overton on Twitter. And that was it. Rick Overton, everybody. What a treat. What a gem. What a cherished treasure of the United States of America. Go and support him. Watch his special. Don't forget to support me. Follow me on Instagram. Subscribe. Leave a review. And check out Trash or Treasure, the new show. I'm also hosting at JP's Comedy Club. Link will be in the show notes for that as well. Come see me perform stand-up. And come see me at the Trash or Treasure show perform whatever it is we're going to do. It's going to be amazing. All right. Love you guys so much. Keep on doing what you're doing. Keep being beautiful people. Keep being amazing people. Give yourself a hug every once in a while. I don't know if you can actually stretch that far back, but give it a try. I mean, people, dudes try and, you know, give them self fellatio. So if you, why don't you just self hug yourself? I think that's way more crucial and important. It's like the self cuddle really. I guess there's the argument there. But anyway, I'm going to leave you guys to ruminate on that and uh, give you a big old gooch smooch. Love y'all. Ciao.